This rather curious beast is AMD's RX 7900 GRE, a card that has technically been out for about 8 months now, and yet it's only just hitting the market for everyone to buy. It's a pretty confusing product, so let me explain what's going on here. The first clue is in the name, GRE. That stands for Golden Rabbit Edition. This card was a China-only GPU. It launched at the end of July in 2023 and was retailing for around $650. Technically, that places it nicely between the 7800 XT and the 7900 XT, although that isn't the price you'll find it at today. Spec-wise, it's actually a lot closer to the 7900 XT with 5120 cores, 320 texture units, 160 ROPs, although it actually matches the 7800 XT with its memory config with 16GB of GDDR6 and a 256-bit memory bus. The 7900 XT only has 5% more cores, although the game clock is around 8% faster, so in theory anyway, it should be pretty close there. It's actually an exact spec-for-spec -spec match to the 6900 XT, save for the process node shrink and chiplet layout instead, the same cores, TMUs, ROPs, memory, and bus width. So it should be pretty close in performance of that, and seeing as that's the only card I have here to compare it to, it seems too perfect not to. Testing a 1440p in Starfield on low settings, you can expect functionally the same performance between the two cards. There's only one FPS splitting them on average, with a bit of back and forth in the 1% no 1% lows. Cyberpunk has the GRE ahead by around 6 FPS average, although not much faster in the 1% lows and slightly behind in the not 1% lows. Realistically, this is functionally identical performance. CS2 sees the 6900 XT taking the slightest lead, although especially for CS2 this is well within the margin of error. Fortnite sees a slight lead across the board for the GRE, although not by much, just 4 FPS average, which means this is, for all intents and purposes, identical. Microsoft Flight Simulator again shows a functional tie, with just 0.1% FPS uh, average between the two cars. Seriously, it really is that close. Hitman's built-in benchmark lets me break out the CPU and GPU performance separately, and of course, I picked the GPU data to look at here. Strangely, the 6900 XT actually has a compelling lead here, to the tune of 20 FPS average and in the 1% lows, with only the 0.1% lows remaining the same. That's a bit of a surprise to me, considering the spec itself is the same, and the two Gigabyte car or Gigabyte OC cards that I'm using here both have the same 250 MHz game clock rating. But even more strangely, Siege shows an even larger performance gap, with 380 FPS in the 6900 XT, and only, <laughs> mind, uh, 330 FPS on the GRE. That's about 15% faster from the XT versus about 8% from Hitman. Happily, things do return to a close race with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with the XT only holding a 3 FPS lead over the GRE. Taking the average of all 8 games, the 6900 XT comes out with 221.9 FPS average versus the GRE, which is 213.1 FPS average. That makes the XT around 4.2% faster overall, or 8.8% faster in the 1% lows, and 13.1% faster in the not 1% lows. That's kind of a lot, considering the spec is so similar, but I mean, that's what I got anyway. It is worth noting that the 6900 XT will draw more power. It's rated for 300 watts, whereas the GRE is more like 260, and it only has two 8-pin PCI power connectors rather than the three that the 6900 XT has. That's uh, the benefit of the die shrink, I suppose. 
The one benefit that the GRE has is the price tag. It's now at $550 or between $500 and £550, which is basically the same price as a 7800 XT and a good £200 cheaper than the 7900 XT are actually about the same price as a used 6900 XT. The question that I'm left with though is, why does this card exist? It's in a weird position, technically cannibalizing AMD's own product line, so why did AMD bother to make this? Well, the general answer is that when you know manufacturing GPU dies, the process of making them is a bit of a dark art with a fair amount of luck involved. Typically, that means that the dies that TSMC makes for AMD aren't always perfect. They have what's called a, a defect rate or defect density, meaning for every X dies they try to make, Y of them will generally have some form of defect. TSMC claims that their defect density for their N5 process node, the one that AMD is using for the main core die here, is under 0.1 uh, per square centimeter, around 0.06, uh, give or take. Uh, given that this is a pretty massive die, something like 30 by 10 millimeters, you should expect to get around 180 possible dies from uh, a 30 centimeter 12 inch wafer. With a 0.06 defect density, that means that you get 147 good dies, 8 partial dies, and 29 defect dies. So let's pretend that the, the good dies here get to be 7900 XTXs. The, there is sort of further nuance there, of course, but let's play pretend for now. So those 37 otherwise non-perfect dies generally can be tested and reconfigured to offer uh, be offered as lower end cards like the 7900 XT and this GRE. Now some of those good dies might actually turn out to be not stable enough to run at the full XTX speed and core count, so they get dropped down too. And also some of the like defect dies might just be completely dead, so that isn't a set thing either, but you can see the spread forming. The assumption then for this GRE is that AMD had a bunch of dies that weren't good enough to be XTs or XTXs, and so they cut down the memory bus and shipped it as the GRE, starting in China where I have to assume the market for this type of card is perhaps a bit more fruitful for AMD. Then when they ended up with more stock than they thought, they launched it as a global product instead. At least that's my theory anyway. The result is the same though. We get a slightly faster card than the 7800 XT for basically the same price. That's not to say that it's perfect. I think a wider memory bus would have helped a lot in eking out more performance out of the core itself, but it's hard to argue that, at least given the current price points, this isn't a great option. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the GRE? Is this a card that is interesting to you? Would you rather get the 78 or 7900 XTs instead? And let me know what you think about the price point too. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon, and you can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards. If you want to see more videos like this, like I said, check them out on the channel or on the end cards. Uh, also, if you want to support the channel and perhaps in the future help me get some more GPUs to be able to test against, feel free to check out the links in the description. There's my uh, open source response time tool and open source latency testing tool that I make myself and design myself and write all the software for. Or there's also a load of like Amazon affiliate links, including to the cards here. Uh, and yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.